NIV, ESV, NRSB, KJV, GNT, NET? No, these are not military acronyms. These are a few of the many Bible versions available to us today. With so many choices, how do you know which one to choose? Is one better than the other? Is there a right one? What's the difference in a translation and a paraphrase? Does anything get lost in translation? These are all good and important questions to consider, but can we become too analytical about choosing a Bible? Yes and no. Let me share some basics about Bible translation that may be helpful in choosing your next Bible. There are several categories of Bible translations, word for word, thought for thought, and a third that's called optimal blend. Translations tend to land in one of these types with all including some level of both. Word for word is described as formal equivalence and purposes to translate the meaning and structure of words in the original language into English. The more literal translations include King James, New King James, New American Standard Bible, and the English Standard Version. The most literal is the interlinear Bible that has the text in its original language with the English equivalent underneath. A second category is thought for thought or dynamic equivalents. This type of Bible purposes to communicate the meaning of a passage in modern day in easy to understand English. This type of Bible is not a translation, but a paraphrase. The most popular of this type includes the Living Bible, the Message, and the Good News Bible. There's also a third category that attempts to strike a balance between word for word and thought for thought, described as an optimal blend. Examples of this category include the New International Version, the Holman Christian Standard, and the New English Translation. Here's the thing, each translation has its strengths and weaknesses. Even the versions that attempt to translate word for word include theological interpretation of the translators. So does that mean we don't trust a translation? <laughs> Not at all. We can appreciate the academic scholars who focus on comparing ancient manuscripts to verify what was penned by the original authors of scripture. There are thousands of ancient manuscripts and pieces of manuscripts that contain portions of the Bible. When the Bible was written by hand, the way to preserve it was by copying it by hand. Though scribes painstakingly produced these copies and distributed them around the world, there's always the potential for human error. Making the task of translation more difficult is that the original manuscripts were not divided into chapters and verses, but were written in large paragraphs. Since we don't have any of the original documents, only copies, and copies of copies, to determine the precise words and letters of the original documents requires comparison between sometimes hundreds of documents that may contain a particular verse in the Bible. New discoveries of ancient texts from archaeological digs help textual experts produce modern translations that are closer to the original writings than ever before. The best and most accurate translations are those translated by a committee of Bible scholars. Always check in the front of the Bible to see a list of translators. You can be assured that the teamwork of these scholars was checked and rechecked to get the closest words and meaning of the original language as possible. There are those who encourage you to use one physical Bible for reading and study that you use over time. Those of this opinion believe that the words actually become coded in your memory as visual and tactile cues. Now I happen to use several versions of the Bible for study and devotional reading. I like the New English Translation or the Net Bible for studying. With over 61,000 translation notes, 
The translation team explains why they chose to translate a word or a phrase in a certain way. Translations like the net include in the footnotes the documentation of textual experts and the textual references for those who desire to do further study as to why a particular word is included in a verse. I like to use the NIV or the ESV when I'm in church or small group Bible study. And I often use the message for devotional reading. The American Bible Society suggests asking these questions when choosing a Bible translation. Why do I need a new Bible? How will I use it? By myself? Only at church? In a small group? In a Bible study? Do I want notes and study tools in my Bible? Do I like the traditional sound and language of older translations? Or do I want my Bible to read more like a modern book with contemporary language? You know, it's hard to do justice to this topic in a short video, but here's the bottom line. Read your Bible. The role of the Holy Spirit in communicating to us the Word of God is just as real today as it was when the original scribes penned the words to parchment. Hebrews 4.12 tells us, For the Word of God is living and active. Whatever Bible you choose, find time each day to pray Psalm 119.18. Open my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of your law.